we're sitting here in Hacksaw. Hacksaw's been uh, George's uh, pet. This car's been building for about eight or nine or ten years, but gets kept put on the back burner because you know we're building other cars for customers and the shop's busy and the racing and what have you. But um, finally got it on the road, and uh, we've been driving this thing for about a month now, maybe a month and a bit. And um, but something special. This engine's got not only does it have our billet. M plates, which we've been using on the street for a long, long time now, with over over 100 engines circulating, and driving and doing day-to-day -day duties and um, and street duties and and racing and and roll racing and drag racing and and um, burnouts and weddings and what have you. But this this particular car here has got the billet rotor housings that we've been testing for two years now. So whilst everybody is claiming they're producing them and they're nearly here and nearly there we we um had our first billet rotor housing that we uh, showed the world in the pac-man rx8 a few years back and again we've been testing them and um like all of our products we thoroughly test the parts themselves on our pack cars before we actually sell them to any of our customers or anybody um uh, in the world or rotary people across the world so um yeah, with thousands and thousands of kilometres uh, of road testing and dyno testing, um, normally by the time we release the product, it's uh, fairly flawless with um, little to no defects. So um, we do all the hard work to make sure that the customer gets the best product for money, something reliable, and um, which, of course, all our parts are designed for reliability and, and to try and make more power and give this rotary engine that, um, that reliability that we've been chasing for many many years so um anyway we're gonna go for a drive on the street show you guys how it drives the water temps and um just the drivability and like this is a normal day in sydney here um yeah 10 years ago I'd, i would have only been dreaming about driving a billet rotary engine on the street um now i'm driving a billet rotary engine on the street with the billet plates and billet rotor housing so um anyway with our m150 motec uh looking after all the all the engine management side of things um, sophisticated allows us to have an engine which is producing upwards of, of 1200 horsepower still drive on the street like and purr like a pussycat so um let's go for a drive eh this is 2020 so we've got to have paddle shift um, these shifters can be manually shifted and we are working at the moment on getting to auto shift in race mode so um, definitely makes for a safer ride when these cars are going down the racetrack having both hands on the wheel engine temp at the moment is 67 degrees C so all our temperatures are in Celsius fuel pressure all pressure is in PSI but yeah just the water temp everybody's a bit concerned about water temp but um yeah 68 degrees we've got our fan turned on about 80 degrees celsius so the car should hover around 76 to about 80 degrees c Things we assemble them just like you would a normal normal engine. 
probably noticed on our engine stands, we actually always um, build the engines from the back to the front. Just We've modified our engine stands, we just feel like it's a little bit stronger to bolt the engine from the rear hand plate rather than the front being al al aluminium. But um, our guys in the US wanted them where they could bolt it from the front as well, so they have the provisions to be bolted from the back or from the front. As you can see, we're cruising as per normal. Cool, water temps are good, drives nice. This car's done about three and a half thousand kilometers now, about 2,000 miles. Just road testing, driving, and uh, we've been doing a compression test on this car in like 500 kilometer intervals just to see what the compression is like, how the seals are wearing. Everything's upwards of 120 psi of compression, um, which is equivalent to you know, the normal Maserata housing. So um, we're pretty proud of the fact that these things are working. They're sealing, uh, they don't leak water, they don't buckle. And of course, on the dyno, with the horsepower they're making, these things have little to no movement. They're not wearing at all. They're not showing any signs of wear. So um, between the housings and the and the end plates, we've got a pretty bulletproof combination with. Let's get out of this truck's way. We've got a pretty bulletproof combination that is uh, suited to street driving as well as, as racing in race cars. So the bill of play originally was designed to go in race cars, but um, we since made a few little adjustments and we got more of these things now in street cars than we have in race cars. Like uh, we hardly ever build cast iron engines anymore because they're hard to come by. Um, most, you know, we've cracked and broken a lot of plates. So have a lot of customers and anything that's around these days is, um, probably from 1986 to 1991, 92. So they're getting old, they're corroded. It's very hard to find a good untouched um, uh, product. So normally the stuff that we're getting has either been in a race car or, or had some kind of work or is corroded from, from sitting around. So um, with a billet rudder, with a billet and plate, you have the versatility where you can put any port you want um, for the all motor guys, we build them with no port, so that, you know, for the peripheral port people, they don't have a port in there whatsoever. But I mean, we can build it with whatever port you want. There's no um, water jacket issues that you've got to contend with because the plates are solid. So um, you can be as extravagant or as um, as normal with the porting as, as as you feel. Some people get just run of the mill pack ports that are proven, as used in our Mazda Six or in the. the Pac-Man RXA, or in Rami Gambino's world record setting street car that he drives everywhere that many of you guys have seen. So um, you can either go with one of our off-the-shelf ports or you can have a specially designed port that you give to us and um, we can um, we can digitize the port and then get it all done, get all the porting done whilst it's on the CNC machine. So all the ports are exactly the same, they flow the same and um, yeah, it makes tuning easier, definitely for a tuner. Uh, having all the, the same ports across the board makes it a little bit easier with adjustment from front to rear or front rear and center if you've got a three rotor. So um, yeah, the um, possibilities are endless. And I mean, we're sitting here, normal Sydney day, 77 degrees engine temp, billet rotor housing, billet end plate. Um, just going for a drive like you would to the shops to buy some milk and some bread or go to the drag strip and run a world record I mean that was pretty good a little bit of butterfingers there anyway um yeah you can drive this car to go to the shops and, and pick up some stuff take your wife and kids out for a drive on a Friday night, or you can drive to the racetrack like Romy Gambino has done many times and set world records. Also, I mate across in the US, Danny Perez, he's got his RX-7 running 840 as well, or 830, I forget now. Um, and he drives his thing on the street, gets his wife to drive it, or his girlfriend, I suppose.
people people often ask how, how do you get these plates to work without the water jackets um, and the cooling so I kind of figured a little while ago that the fact that the plates are aluminium and the rotor housings are aluminium the, the, the way they're dissipating the heat is far more superior to the way the cast iron plate is so we haven't had a need to put any water behind the, the, the surface the combustion surface on the plates and whilst at first we thought that this wasn't going to work and it was going to be a race only thing we've since proven over many many cars and many many thousands of kilometers and miles that you actually don't need it and um, here's the proof we're driving 74 degrees normal day um, I'll probably get it to sit in some traffic somewhere in a minute so we can see what traffic is like but yeah what Mazda did with the cast iron plate and the um, aluminium rotor housing maybe they needed the water there but of course with the aluminium plate aluminium rotor housing it's the same material so um, the contraction expansion and contraction of both the materials or both the plate and the housing is done at the relatively the same um, same time at the same rate so um, yeah we haven't had any issues overheating issues or coolant issues or water seal issues in fact I had a customer um, earlier on this year uh, lost one of his water cooling lines had to sit in traffic for over 45 minutes with the temperature over 127 degrees C and th these these temperature sensors are topped out at that so we don't really know how much the temperature was but on the log data it was 127 degrees C for 45 minutes whilst he got out of um, the M5 tunnel and that's in Sydney and um, anyway he limped it back home to the workshop repaired the hose put some water in it this was on the following day started the car up and much to our amazement the engine is still running with no blow-by still got perfect compression so um I mean I don't really recommend you do that of course but it just shows how versatile and how strong these plates are and how well they do dissipate the heat so um yeah look they use aluminium radiators to dissipate the heat and um, because it's a good conductor of course they don't use cast iron radiators um, so I, I figure the heat transfer and the heat dissipation with the aluminium plate is what's allowing us to be able to do this and um, yeah we've got we've got a race engine in this car and we can put around town with it like driving a standard um, like driving, driving a standard Torvay carburetor engine and um, yeah you wouldn't know the difference we'll probably pull over here somewhere try and sit in some traffic and see if we can get some temperature to build up we've had we've been pretty lucky the traffic is flowing but um yeah that's the way it is um, with the way we build these engines we've tried to keep it as standard as possible so um, no need to any any fancy tools or special tools you don't need to heat the plate up or cool the gear down and the stationary gears fit in like you would a factory plate and torque the engine up like you would a normal engine uh, we do run a little bit different um, um, torque on the half inch studs so um, with these engines we build them we put half inch studs and also our um, 16 millimeter dowels so we run 10 of them dowels in a 13B and we run the rest of the engine is run with half inch studs we torque them down to 38 foot pound as per normal and um, but the engine predominantly all the clearances all the torque settings all the oil pump all the water seals corner seals side seals everything is set up like you would normally set up a, a normal cast iron engine for the purpose of what you're building it for of course we build race engines um, turbocharged race engines with different settings to what we do a uh, 30B bridge pull for example so but it applies across the board so um, you would build it like you would build a normal engine our, our first build an engine was we we first built a plate was in 2006 so um, these aren't a new thing by all means we've been using these plates now for a long long time and with our in-house testing destructive and non-destructive testing um, we've been able to iron out all the products iron out all the problems 
Sam Sadek was in charge of our um, destructive testing. Basically, he was given an engine set, mate, go break it. And Sam is not known for his mechanical sympathy, by all means. So, um, yeah, when Sam gives you back the keys, or brings the car back and says, I can't break it, well, you can pretty much be assured that he's damn well tried to break it, and he hasn't. So, um, these plates are tough, they're wear resistant, and whilst you've got good oil pressure and good cooling and a good tune-up, these things are indestructible. But of course, um, these days we're pushing harder and harder. So um, power that we were making from a three-rotor a few years ago, we're making out of a two-rotor now. So um, we're pushing, we're pushing harder and harder. So um, we're starting to find all the limits of the rotors and the cranks and housings and, and what have you. So if you do have a, a huge blow-up and you do damage the plate, which does happen from time to time. When you have like a bearing failure and, and the rotor crashes into the plate, well, yeah, I mean, you can set the plate back. We can strip the coating, repair the plate and recoat it. And the thing is good and new. Um, when the plates do come back for service, um, we actually put them all back on the CNC machine, make sure all the centers are still on center, make sure everything's still concentric because when you have had a huge blow up, Normally, there's, there's other, you know, there's there's an equal and opposite reaction to everything that's happening. So, if, if you have a huge, um, if you have a blow up and you destroy a shaft or a bearing or, or a rotor, so th th you could damage the plate. And if, if uh, you do, when it gets there, we actually check to make sure it's all on center so that when you do get the plate back, it's as good as new. And um, over the years, we've had a fair few plates come back that we've uh, repaired and they're still up and running today. So, like to my knowledge, we haven't thrown away a single plate ever. And um, whilst people do get make mistakes in tuning or they have lean outs or they run low on oil, um, yeah, the plate is salvageable. Whereas a cast iron plate, you, of course, if you crack that plate, all that hard work from porting and dowling and whatever, you, all the machining gets thrown away because you just throw the plate away and um, it's useless for anything else. Whereas these things here, whilst you may damage them, you still can repair them and then that's a good investment. Um, the guys at Killers Turbo, they've been running their plates for a few years now. They've had lots and lots of passes. We see them every now and then for a quick checkup, make sure they're all all right. Um, make sure everything's still straight and on square. And um, yeah, sorry mate. Sydney traffic. Actually, I think I might go down to um to the shopping centre at Padstow. Maybe we should go get ourselves um some breakfast for the boys, some um, cream buns for Sam's deck, and some manouche. Gonna have the manouche. All this driving on a 13B billet, full billet. We're always innovating here at Pack Performance, trying to find the next thing. So would you say now that we've got more, more billet plates in street cars than race cars? Yeah, I think so, I mean, yeah, for sure, like, um, We've got, definitely got more billet plates in, in street cars now than, than race cars. And with with the way things are going, the street scene is pretty hot in Australia at the moment, the radial stuff. And then like a, a drag car, you know, sits in a trailer for months at a time. And it's pretty selfish because like so many of your, your mates help you and your crew and whatever, but then only the driver gets to drive it. Whereas these cars here, um, they can be used, of course, to race on a Wednesday night or on a Friday night. You can drive them on the weekends. You can take your wife, you can take your mates, your crew. And um, yeah, it, it's definitely, definitely something which has become really, really popular in Australia. And I suppose in the US. And I mean, we're playing, we're getting this car ready for drag week because we want to go do the 1,000 or 2,000 kilometers and, and then just show how good this package is. And then, of course, race against the V8 guys and, and sort of um, all the conventional style cars with this rotary engine. And um, 
just show how versatile they are. But yeah, like I said, in streetcars, a lot of people are buying them, not because they need them, but because they want them. It's a good investment. Um, you, so you don't need billet plates to go fast? No, of course not. You know, you don't need billet plates to go fast. Everybody has run fast with cast iron plates. It's just how long you can run fast for before you actually break them and then you spill all the oil and water on the on the racetrack. So yeah, like I get that. There's people running cast iron plates and they're running fast, but they can't do it always. And when they do make a mistake, they break. I mean, and of course, all credit to Mazda. These plates were designed to make a couple of hundred horsepower, and they're making over a thousand horsepower from cast iron plates. Something's got to give somewhere. So um, yeah, we're not saying that you need a billet plate to run fast, but hey, when you've got a billet plate, you know you're not going to oil the racetrack from cracking a plate and putting oil, uh, getting oil all over your tyres, or crack a plate and um, put coolant down on the floor and crash. I mean, we had one of our customers. I've seen it a few times where people crack the rear plate, pop a wash plug out, and then the coolant goes everywhere, they drive over it and they crash. I mean, it's a safety thing as well. Cast iron plate can do that, whereas an aluminium plate can't. I mean, if you have a fitting brake or a radiator hose burst or something, you can still do it, but I mean, hey, motor racing is dangerous, we all know that. But one thing that's for sure, that's guaranteed is, you're not gonna crack the replay, you're not gonna crack the front plate, and you're not gonna put oil or water on the ground from the plates being cracked. So, cast iron is always susceptible to that, and we've done it many times, and the reason why we went to the aluminium plate is because of that reason. We were sick of that 20B centre plate cracking around where the stationary gear was, because it was really weak. And um, so once we perfected that middle, that big fat middle plate, we then, of course, started making the front, centre and rear. Some people buy front and rear only, which is a good thing. I mean, other people buy just the front. But if you buy the front just for what it is, then you know your front's not gonna break. But if you come to push and start pushing hard, well then, um, you're gonna find the next weakest link in that chain. So normally, if you've got a good, front plate you're gonna break the rear plate and then once you've got a front and rear well then and you push hard you're gonna break the, the intermediate so um, yeah it's horses for courses I suppose but definitely one thing that's for sure is these things are streetable they drive on the street they get raced they get drag raced burnouts and um, yeah they live to fight another day perfect coolant temperatures no blow by they're a little bit lighter than the cast iron plate. Versatile. Put any um, port you want in it. Repairable. The list goes on and on. And uh, why wouldn't you? It's a good investment. But you know what? We just sit there. We did this whole interview driving on billet rotor housings. That concept dawns on me. A few years ago, that was just a a dream. We were all dreaming it. There's people across the world making billet parts for these engines now. I believe there's some billet rotors, so pretty sure, pretty, I'm pretty sure pretty soon we're gonna have a full billet engine, plates, rotors, rotor housings, stationary gears, the list goes on. So um hey, whilst 2020 has been a pretty bad year. Um been a reasonable year um, for the development and whilst um, there hasn't been much racing because of COVID and what have you at least we've been spending time on the dyno and um, really really proofing these parts making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do ironing out all the bugs and um, yeah Felix Wankel should be happy um, to get that little obscure unknown engine 79 cubic inches for a 13B to make 15, 16, 1700 horsepower. It's just, that was a dream a few years ago and um, we're doing it on a regular basis now. And we're driving that same engine on the street. Smart engine management, good fuel, billet parts, good technology, good apex seals, and um, yeah, exciting times. All this time driving. 78 degree 
water temps. That's 170 degrees Fahrenheit for the guys in the US. Paddle shift. Can't drive fast here, mate. Can't drive fast here, you will law abiding citizens at pack performance. We always obey the speed rules, speed limits. There's a time and place for it. I mean, hey, we started life, we started out being young, doing all the dumb things on the street and what have you, but yeah, these cars are too powerful now. Way, way, way too powerful to be mucking around on the street with. I'm just gonna pull up here, pop this thing in a neutral for you. And we'll just have a hot shutdown. See if we can get this bad girl to start again. Starts up. Starts up better than the 12A twin dizzy. Starts good, good compression. In the mid 120s. Um, yeah, what more can I say? If you guys have any questions, you want to see any pictures, um, anything that you guys anybody you want to know ins and outs um pretty happy to uh, answer any questions you have within reason i can't ask you can't ask me what the color of my wife's underwear is because i'm not going to answer that but anything within reason we'll answer um keep pushing so um for now long live the rotary engine Bill it parts, bill it rotary, rotor housings. Wow, look at that. We've got a B. We've got a B on the 13B. Give you guys a I'll give you guys a quick walk around of the car. It's um RX3 four door. Um We've got our Recaros, and they're like fishnet. So that's um, the time, they're time sensitive. That's when we built the car. So um, yeah, interior trimmed. RC comps on the back, 275s. This baby's going to boogie. We got three and a half inch exhaust, <clears throat> Savannahs. 120 litre fuel tank in the back. Of course, um, big brakes, Woolwood brakes. We want these things to stop as well as um, as go. Safety is pretty paramount. <clears throat> but um, I know it's a bit hard to see here. We got one of the new PWR, the 3000 horsepower, 3000 series watered air coolers on there. Um, standard. Air vents here. And should we look inside the engine bay? Human bay. We'll give you a look at the engine bay. Oh, maybe not. We're gonna leave something for next time. Um, yeah. Like I said, multi-purpose car these days. Billet parts, indestructible, and um, looking forward to hitting the racetrack as soon as um, Sydney opens up again. All right. Talk to you later. Thank you.